reading this morning is taken from Exodus 16, reading first 1 to 5 and then 13 to 20. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord our provider. The whole congregation of the Israelites set out from Elim and Israel came to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elim and Sinai, on the 15th day of the second month after they had departed from the land of Egypt. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread, for you had brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I'm going to rain down bread from heaven for you. And each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them, whether they will follow my instructions or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on the other days. Then we go across to verse 13. In the evening quails came up and covered the camp. And in the morning there was a layer of dew upon the camp. And when the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine uh, flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded Gather as much as it is <clears throat> gather as much of it as as each of you needs. And Oma to the person according to the number of persons, all providing for those in their own tents. The Israelites did so, some gathering some more, some less. But when they measured it with a, with an Oma, those who gathered much had nothing over, and those who gathered little had no shortage. They gathered as much as each of them needed. And Moses said to them, let no one leave any of it over until the morning. But they did not listen to Moses. Some left part of it until the morning, and it bred worms and became foul. And Moses was angry with them. Thank you, Peter. A little apology for you this morning. Um, I think I have great sense of jumpers this morning. Um, I really like my jumpers. Apparently, this one is really struggling to hold my microphone. So, if you hear an almighty bang on the floor or I need to readjust it, apparently, this microphone is slightly struggling with this jumper combination. I apologize. <laughs> So, if you've been around church over the last few weeks, you'll know that we are considering the Lord's Prayer. About uh, a few weeks ago, we started with an intro, then we had the opening line, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Then, um, last week, we had Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And today, we consider the line, Give us today our daily bread. And I don't know if you if you notice with the, the way those lines go, actually we're in a little bit of a turn in, in the way that the, the prayer is going. First line, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. We look at God. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And then this week, give us today our daily bread. Next week, forgive us our sins. Do you hear there's a, a little bit of a tone difference Um, between those lines. So today, give us our daily bread is a a start in a looking towards um, God and ourselves. But actually, I think this is a really good um, imprint on how we might pray ourselves. The Lord's Prayer started first by looking towards God, declaring the truth of God, and then looked to the requests that we can bring to God, and today is the first of those requests. 
So, today's reading that will help us think about this line in the Lord's Prayer is from Exodus. Uh, And to give you a little bit of a a background, if you don't know this particular story, um, the Israelites had been forced into Egypt due to a famine. Briefly, they had been supplied for in Egypt, but they had found themselves um, um, imprisoned by the Egyptians. They had been forced to do work. And then Moses had been raised up, and he was to send them out of Egypt, to free them from Pharaoh. And so what he's done is he's taken the people after the plagues. He has parted the the Red Sea, if you know the story. He has walked them through to the other side. When they get to the other side, there is an almighty party for what God has done for them. And then the passage just before what we had, um, they are led to a place called Mara. And so Mara literally means the place of salty water, the water that they cannot drink. And they grumble to Moses and they say, well, we can't drink this. He gets a stick, he puts it in the water, it becomes drinkable. They go, thanks, Moses. And then we get to our passage that we had today. They enter an area called the Wilderness of Sin, an ominous name if ever you were going to enter a place. You do not want to see that on the map that you walk into. But they do. And what do they do as soon as they get there? They complain. They're like, Moses, when we were back in Egypt, at least we had food. Why doesn't God just kill us now? And Moses must have been annoyed at them. They were slow to learn. Because what had God done? Since they had been imprisoned in Egypt, he had raised up someone who would free them. They had made their way out of captivity. They had found themselves in a place where they couldn't drink. God had supplied for them. And here they are. God has found himself faithful to them. And already they're saying, oh, I wish I was still in captivity. And so something that we see throughout the story of the Israelites and throughout the whole Bible is this idea of not forgetting what God has already done for us. The Bible across the whole story is about this idea of remember the God who has proved himself faithful. And this is a a little thing for us as well. Do we remember those times in our lives when God has been faithful to us, or are we quick to forget, to go back to, to worrying Um, as if God had never been with us. Maybe we're new to faith and we've not experienced that. And I encourage us to to pray, God, would would you show yourself faithful to me in a time when I am struggling? And maybe we have been um, following Jesus for a number of years and we're coming to a time of difficulty. Remember those times in our past when we have seen the faithfulness of God to us. So, in today's reading, God leads them into this area called the wilderness of sin, and he promises to give them bread from heaven. It says, go out and gather enough for each day, and on the sixth day, gather twice as much. This was to allow them to take a day off, a Sabbath, a true rest that God had instituted right from the beginning of Genesis. So God gives them enough for each day. It says, just gather as much as you need. And it says, some gathered more and some less. But when it was measured out with an omer, which is a a unit of measure, those who gathered much had nothing over, and those who gathered little had no shortage. And they gathered as much as they needed. So do you see what has happened in, in this moment in the story? No amount of greed on one side, and no amount of need on the other was able to negate the fact that God knew how much each person needed, how much each family needed, and God was providing for their daily need. It's interesting, in this um, part of the story, there is no rainy day supply. Those who disobeyed God and stored enough for tomorrow morning found that their bread had been 
filled with worms and had gone foul. But this might seem a little dull, a little boring, maybe just, it said little kind of frost almost. They had to sort of scrape it together. I don't think that maybe the bread was itself. Maybe they had to work with it uh, and to create the food. But did you also notice the little bit about the quails? This is a really interesting one. It said, in the evening time, the quails blew in. And a few people have done um, a little bit of research in this. And this is actually a meteorological phenomenon. I don't know if you've ever seen the news where it says, you know, light rain with a smattering of quail. (laughs) But apparently in the desert, this is a possibility. It doesn't happen very often. The quail live out by the coast. They can't live in the desert. Um, But occasionally, if a very strong wind will blow the quail, they will find themselves in the desert. Um, And this seems to have been what happened in this exact moment when the people need it. And it said, it says this, that, um, where is it? Uh, That they covered the camp. This isn't a light smattering of quail. This, in my mind, it's like you cannot walk around without accidentally stepping on one of these things. And still, what do we find the people doing? Storing up for tomorrow morning. This is a God who who day by day is showing himself faithful. In the morning, we are having this fine layer of bread that they're collecting up, each to the exact amount. In the evening, they're finding quail. There's even variety in their diet. Do you know... Um, Jesus' story, the parable um, of the person who stores up their wealth in barns. It's a story where someone has so much that they need to knock down the barns that they have to build bigger barns. And the crux of that story is that they get to the point where they feel like they do not need God, but ultimately, at the end of their life, they could not take it with them, leaving the whole idea completely pointless. So, in the story of Exodus, did the people need to store bread for tomorrow morning? The answer is no, because God was faithful and he would provide for them that next day. I don't know if you've had a time in life when you've got to that point when day by day you've actually genuinely needed God to turn up. If you haven't, come along to the compassion time next week, because there are so many people around the world who live by this day to day. I've only had it a few times in my own life. I remember um, after uni, I was trying to get a job. It was very, very difficult. Month on month, I um, was in a new house that I couldn't pay the rent um, I finally managed to get a job which would pay me minimum rent, uh, minimum wage, um, but I had to get uh, a uniform for it. Um, I had to work for the entire first month, uh, and when I kind of worked out that I had about 15 to 20 pounds to last me the entire month, there is nothing that has taught me uh, to rely on God better than that. And you know what? God turns up in amazing ways when we do. But most of the time, I think we can get to that point where we end up storing just a little bit of bread, a little bit here and there. Now, are we being sensible? I'm not saying that um, we shouldn't have pensions, we shouldn't have savings at all. But what is our mentality? Um, Do we trust God? Or does the fear set in when we put a little bit aside? Do we get to that point where we don't need to trust God anymore? That story from Exodus shows us the kind of the challenge of getting to that place where we don't feel like we need to uh, rely on God anymore. Jesus as well in the Gospels um, talked um, about fear and, and trusting for God to provide. He used the analogy of the birds of the air. He said, um, look to them, how they don't sow or reap the food that they eat, but God provides for them. And imagine how your heavenly Father 
provides for you and cares for you even more than them. In that story that Jesus gives as well, there is that daily provision, not worrying about the future, but actually trusting God for the now. So, how does our reading today illuminate this line in the Lord's Prayer, give us today our daily bread? Give us. I don't know if it, it's, to you it sounds, sounds like it could be a bit demandy. But actually, let's think about that story in Exodus. God longed to give and to provide for his people. And the Bible is utterly clear on that. He cares and he provides always for the people who trust in him, those who will be willing to say, God, I trust you. Lord, would you give me my daily bread? We're not being demanding to ask from God that he would provide for us. I genuinely believe that God wants to provide for us and for all our needs. Like those who went out each morning to collect the fine frost of bread that went as the dew left. Not too much and not too little. God knows our needs. And we are encouraged to seek our daily bread. But we're encouraged to seek our daily bread. Not our weekly shop, not the monthly store cupboard. But we are encouraged to daily come back to God with our exact needs that we have for today. Now this could seem a little bit mean, a little bit like God is demanding that he will only give us the exact amount that he needs. But think back to that story in Exodus as well. What were those times when they came to God and then they sort of fell away from God? It was quite quick often for the people to for one moment to rely on God and then suddenly to forget that they knew God, that God would provide for them. And so this daily idea is to to never go as far from God that we remember our daily need for him. Like in prayer, do we regularly come to God in prayer? Because I think we could pray once a week and then sort of try and ride it out for the week. But actually, we forget that actually our needs are for today. Uh, And in prayer, we need to come to God each day and say, God, I need you. Uh, These are my needs for today. The needs of every day are unique. God, how will you use me today? So, if we are to pray, give us today our daily bread. We are, pro- we are praying that God will provide for us today. And also by saying, God provide for me today, we're not actually worrying about tomorrow. We are trusting God for tomorrow by praying, Lord, give me what I need for today. So as we pray this more and more, we learn to trust that God actually knows the exact amount that we need. That, that reference to the omer, that reference to the exact amount that the people would need for today. And saying, God, I trust for you today. I use all that you give me today. And I leave tomorrow for tomorrow. Let's be a people who regularly, daily come back to God. Remembering that at the beginning of the Lord's Prayer, We first declare the truth of God, and then we humbly come to him with our needs for today, in the assurance that he knows our needs, and that he cares for us, and he loves us, and he hears us, and that he will provide for everything that we need for today. Amen.